Is this resume good enough to get hired as a junior game dev? That's what we're going to talk about today. I get resumes sent to me all the time to review people that want to get into the industry and are just struggling to get the actual interview. They'll send them over and ask for some feedback, and a lot of the time I'll just reply directly back to them. But in this one, I wanted to share it with everybody because I think there's a lot of interesting stuff here and a lot of things to note that might help you along the way if you're trying to get a game dev job. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and all that stuff. And if you have thoughts or comments along the way, make sure that you drop them down below. If you can think of something that I missed here, or if you know you have a question about something that I say. Also, we still have seats for the ultimate game dev course. For those of you who haven't checked it out yet, the course consists of over 160 hours of great game development content. And this year we were including some special bonuses like a three month Unity Pro license, a one year Odin Inspector license, and some really amazing assets as well. The course will take you from zero to 100, teaching you essentially everything that you need to know to successfully create your own games while building a variety of game types along the way. This offer is limited to 150 seats though, and most of them are already gone. So if you're interested, make sure that you click the link in the description and grab your seat now to advance your game dev skills today. Before we get started, I did anonymize this thing because I don't want to give out people's phone numbers and addresses and everything. So for the video, I'll just refer to the person as KT and we'll keep everything else somewhat private. Now I want to start with what I thought was the best part or the most impressive part and the thing that a lot of people just completely fail at and that's the cover letter. This thing didn't just come as a PDF with the resume, the standard, you know, here are the things that I've done. It started with a very direct cover letter written to me about what it is that they're writing for and why they're sending the resume. And this is a very important thing to do. Let's read through this and break it down. So right at the beginning, they've got their name, again, blocked out so that it's not too public, and then the position that they're applying for or the position that they're at or what you should think of them as, a junior game developer, which I think is perfect. Next, there's a game portfolio, which would be perfect if the link worked, but for some reason, I'm just getting an error every time. Could be me, but it seems to be broken. Followed by all of the needed contact information and location information for somebody who's wondering about hiring them and wants to know where they're located or what state or country they're living in. Next though, we get to the important parts or the, I guess, more important parts. The introduction and the welcome. First, they start off by knowing who they're writing to, saying to Jason Wyman. And I recommend that if you can find out who's going to be reading these cover letters and these resumes, that you just address it directly to them. If not, then address it to whatever the position is or whoever, I guess, ad address it properly as best you can or keep it generic if you really don't know. But I like that this one is very targeted and it, it just works. So it says, uh, to Jason Wyman, senior badass on YouTube, which just cracked me up. And it says, uh, dear Jason, I'm writing you this mock cover letter in hopes of piquing your interest and in further advancing my current career goals. I've not yet worked on a team of professional developers, which means that I have not yet learned the wrong way to do things. I thought that was a, a pretty cool way to phrase that. I could still even be taught the proper ways of doing things, in fact. And I think that that probably doesn't need to be here. This second sentence um, doesn't necessarily need to be there. Or maybe you talk about how you're really excited and interested in learning um, the right ways to do things from them or from whoever you're writing to. I think that that would, uh, that would be slightly better and get rid of the in fact at the end. Um, Let's continue on. So it says, apart from my technical prowess, I also take pride in my creativity, sharp wit, harder te things to teach. I'm sure you'll agree. Oh, yes, I, I get the things. Get it. Reading it took me a second. Reading it out loud is a little bit harder. And it says, a dry humor needs fluid prose. That's my motto. So again, just more attempts at humor, which works for me. So I'd say overall, it's a pretty good hit. Um, and then it says that they'll be a great wizard once trained up. Now, my recommendations on this, though, if you're going in for um, something slightly more serious in an actual position, you want to um, talk a little bit about the things that they're doing that you're excited about and the things that you'd like to be part of. If they're working on a game or they're working with some tech that you find really interesting, then you can call that out. Then that's going to be a big selling point. It lets them know that you really understand and know about the company, know about the project and the team, and know what it is that they're looking for. So then you can better say whether or not you're a good fit for it. So I think that overall, 
This cover letter is pretty good. It does a good job of the target, but if you want to, again, target it at an actual game dev position, make sure that you're targeting it towards um, talking about the things that they're doing that you would like to help contribute to and um, how you f see yourself being able to do that. Now let's go on to the resume. It's nice and short because there's not a lot of experience, but there are a lot of things that I want to comment on. The first one is right at the top where there's a picture. Generally, I would recommend against putting a picture of yourself into your resume. There's really no benefit and it's only possible negatives. You could just there, There's really no positive to putting your picture in there unless you're applying for like being a model or somebody that needs to be out publicly in front of some some place and you want to be like visually representing them. Maybe you're like a TV host or something. Outside of that, uh, I don't think that it helps and I think that it just has negatives. Anybody could see anything in there and mistake it. There's nothing wrong with the, the picture specifically in this one that's blurred out, but just in general, I would say don't put pictures in there. There's really no positive to it for you at all. It's only possible negatives. Now let's go on to the next part because right up at the top, we've got work history and it states that they've worked for 10 years in the service industry from 2012 to present, starting as a dishwasher and working their way up to the chef position, showing that they're able to you know, stay there for quite a while and work their way up, learning new skills and kind of progressing through the company or through the organization, which is good. But since it's not relevant, I would honestly probably push this down. I don't think that it's necessarily the thing that you need to lead with or want to lead with because it's just not relevant to the things that you're actually trying to get into. It's good to see it um, and see the progression. But other than that, I would say that I would just move it down a little bit, uh, maybe to near the bottom or second from the bottom or something like that. I generally do that for anybody without a whole lot of work history. The education part, um, I would leave there. I think that in general, it's pretty good. You've got three years of art college pursuing a degree in animation and visual effects, and then two years of self-education using YouTube tutorials and other online resources. That part's interesting, but it's very vague on what it is you've been doing for the last two years because it's essentially the last two years that you're talking about here and you're not really telling us like were you learning more about art stuff because the thing right above it is is art related were you learning how to code were you building games were you doing something completely different like learning how to trade stocks or something you've really got to dive in and i think be much more specific with that and i would also move that up above the art college part you know, if you're wanting to get into the programming side of it and that's really the focus, then I would push that up. If art is the thing that, it, that you're working on, though, and it's, um, well, if, if first off, if art is the thing that you're working on, then you want to be applying for a junior game artist, not, not a junior game developer position. So I would change that up. But other than that, overall, I think the education part is decent, but definitely need that extra information there on what it is you've been learning and what you've been focusing on. The next part I think is probably the best and this is where you're going to want to focus probably most of your energy improving things because there's good stuff here and you just got to really kind of call it out and highlight it. So you've got three games made. The first one's a dungeon escape which uh, sounds kind of simple but it's very difficult to tell the scale of it. It says it's a tiny game that has way more systems to manage than anything else you've made. But that doesn't really tell me if that's, you know, three systems and everything else was one system or if it's some really complex game. So what I would do in this one is call out some of the really cool and interesting systems. Any of the systems that sound big and cool and neat, even if they weren't really that complicated or the hardest thing to do, call those out in there. Say, you know, this game has whatever system, some randomization, some generation or whatever it is that it's got in there. A, Put those special features in, whatever those systems are. And then um, going down to the next one, the Asteroids clone, it says that it's a Asteroids or a clone of the classic Asteroids game, but you added a regenerating shield bar that was an interesting challenge to make. And this is almost like the opposite. Here you've added a lot of detail, a very specific part, including that this was challenging. And I find that this is probably not a great idea. I would probably yank this sentence out and say that you just added um, other unique mechanics to the game to extend on it or something like that. Because a regenerating shield bar to one person might sound like this 
big complex system. Maybe there's a shield forming around it and you blast it and effects pop off and all kinds of cool stuff. Somebody else might think of that as like three lines of code because they're thinking the very minimal of you know or what a shield would be and a little bar that updates. So you want to maybe make that a little bit more generic, I think, and less specific just because of how people may perceive it. And then the last one down here was a wolf run where people, you run and uh, you do some visual tricks. And I would, um, again, reword this a little bit so that it's a little bit less, well, let me think. You run around as scenery moves past you, really proud of the visual tricks used to keep the player in the center of the scene. Um, you know, maybe just leave that one. Uh, thinking about it some more, I think that that one's probably okay without any real change. I want to go down to the skills. So this is the last part of the resume. Here you've got hard skills. You've got C-sharp programming and then a bunch of art. And then here you've got fluent software, game engine, which could be art or coding, and uh, a bunch of art and video stuff. So you can probably see the, the problem here. If you're looking for development jobs, you want to find like game programming jobs, you're going to need to have this be more focused on the programming side, the things that you're good at in the programming side, um, whatever that is, and maybe cut back on some of the, um, the other specifics. Like you might not need to list all of the bits of fluent software. I think that just having Unity up here and hard skills, unless you really want to mention that you're good at, um, at these other things. But I would put these kind of down somewhere else and not linked with Unity. And if you do want to do 3D modeling and stuff, then not linked with Blender either because you don't want these being necessarily associated with your skill set in these because then I don't know, are you really like a 2D graphics artist or are you really like into video editing and you just happen to be doing game stuff? And I, I would just kind of, yeah, rearrange those a little bit. Last parts, um, soft skills. Everybody kind of has the same one, so I generally just leave those off because I don't, I don't know. Whenever I see them, I just think like, okay, they copied the soft skills thing from every other resume. And then the other relevant skills, um, I think the voice acting part and composing could be. Um, and you could just put like, a, I, I would put like musician or something, like the ability to make a audio, audio engineering or light audio engineering too. So that way people can think like, okay, it's a programmer that could also help out with the audio side. Or one of the things you've got here in your hard skills, this all the 2D stuff that could be, or the texturing stuff, like, okay, this is a programmer who can help out with um, some of the art side of things. So if that's the way that you want to sell it, I would just make sure that you're really focused on that and put the programming skills or the game dev skills up there. Again, if it's not it, it's the art skills, then push those up there. It's a little bit unclear for me. So make sure that you're focused on that and then list the other things as additional things that you can bring to the company. All right, I'm out of breath and I hope this was helpful. So if you liked it, please hit thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have other thoughts or feedback or stuff that I missed or stuff that you think I said wrong, um, just drop a comment down below. Kind of curious to see what everybody else thinks of this one. And if you have a resume of your own, uh, feel free to send it in.